<laughs> That's <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> and, and your mouse pad is like $300. <laughs> 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 Pasadena, California, I saw some handsome boys on the corner of the street and I said, uh, excuse me, handsome boys, as flies for wanted boys. And, and then we, we came just by, popped up. And then we bought a bunch of smoothies. And next thing you know, we were talking about uh, dra the Dragon Ball Super Card game. And it turns out they actually both play the Dragon Ball Super Card game, believe it or not. Uh, you guys you guys want to introduce yourselves? See, I'm Trey and this is... What's up, I'm John Carlo. This is my first tournament ever. I'm really excited. Um, I just started playing the game like a week ago, so... He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lion. Yeah. You can see it in his hair. He's a true lion. Right. <laughs> he is a true lion. Um, yeah, so we were talking about things, you know, it's, it seems like this, uh, this is, we haven't had an in-person event really like, there's been some in-person events, yeah. but nothing, nothing by Bandai really yeah. since before COVID, right? Con. Yeah. Uh, since it's been two days of Gen Con have been the only IRL large scale events. Everything else been like capped to 64 players. Hmm. How many people were at Gen Con? 120 something. Were you there? Yeah. How'd you like it? It's cool. Did you run pretty well? Yeah, yeah, they did a good job. I was talking to David. I know he was like super stressed about running it and he was like, I'm so psyched to just be judging this one. Yeah. Like, I can't even imagine. No, the they did, they did straight. On the on the player side, I didn't notice anything crazy. I mean, it, yeah. it started on you, time. And what were you playing at Gen Con? Icarus, yeah. How'd you like it? It was good. How'd you do? I won and then I didn't win. <laughs> you won I won, win I won the whole event and then I gave it away for free. <laughs> Wait, what happened? I'm dead ass, yeah. Nothing. I, the, no names will be named, but in the last round, I played the guy who got first place and I scooped to him so he would get his invite and then he got first place. Nice. So I won the event. <laughs> nice. I just gave it away. Yeah, yeah. And that was when Bojack was still. That in was the deck, full right? power, blue, yellow, broken Icarus, yeah. 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 So, I mean, I just, I was just playing a tier zero deck. Yeah. Of course, you're going to do well, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I think in an event, like, if you want to do well, a big part of that is, like, playing a deck that's good. Yeah. You that's know? It. You, like if, you, if you're not playing a tier one deck, you can't expect to do well. Yeah. You can expect to, like, slide in, but yeah. you're not going to you're possible. not going to win an event with, like, a tier two deck, especially yeah. an event as competitive as nationals. A small, small scale regional, webcam regional, you could do well, but this is yeah. nationals. This is a different story. Yeah. Yeah. How do you guys feel about the new time rule? Go ahead. I feel like... It is good in certain ways, but in other ways, it's going to cause people to get really frustrated, uh, especially with this being the first real event for a while that we've had a similar time rule. Right. A lot of people are going to be trying their way to like figure out a way to make it to where we ca they can draw, and there's only technically one well, way you I can guess draw. Before we talk about it, why don't you explain the new time rule for so the, people so that So the don't new time rule basically rule says at the end of time, the games are over. There's no like continue your plays. Uh, you don't get to you get to finish your attack technically, but it's not on the rules, but everybody knows you finished your last attack and that's it. Um, and you decide a winner based off the number of games won. So say if you win game one and then game two and you're game three, so y'all are in game three, somehow, some way, the only way to technically draw is to get to siding and they call time. And that's very unrealistic, so we will have more rounds. There'll be less draws. There'll be a winner of most matches at well, 98% or more will be wins or losses. So does that mean that we're going to see more rounds in the event than yeah. usual? Well, yeah. for the for the previous events, we've had shorted tournaments. So it was a problem. That's one of the reasons why the rules change because they were doing the rule where it, we play until there's one winner. Uh, sorry, one like undefeated, undefeated. person. Yeah. One undefeated, right? How how many uh, how many rounds do you think we're going to see tomorrow? 8. 8. eight. eight. Yeah. How how many players do you think are showing up to this? 300. 300. 300 sounds reasonable, yeah. Uh, 500 is probably unreasonable due to the fact that I, I literally know people that would normally have went, but uh, yeah, 16, you have to get your vaccine and your and they don't want to be the vaccine to play. Sure. Uh, so like that, COVID in, impacted yeah, our game I in mean, general. Bandai just wasn't giving out invites. Normally they give out invites like candy, bro. Like you go top 32 of a regional gets an invite. Like you go, you do LCQs. It was nothing. Like so many people just didn't play the game because like people didn't want to play webcam, which is understandable. Like that's just, if you don't want to play, you don't want to play. And then because of that, they didn't get their invite. And there was no LCQ, so they got screwed out of coming to the national. But. Amazing, amazing insight from a guy that just started playing last week. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> very true, very true. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, I did pretty well at one regional, the Chicago regional yeah. back in 2019. And I think, you know, I credit that to playing a good deck. I was playing Blue Yellow yeah. Rolly. It was after Button got banned. Yeah. 
And, and then I did well at an event with it. I think I was the only person to top with that deck. And then the weekend after, my Sensei Miguel topped with the deck at the PPG thing. And then yeah. Broly got it routed after that. Okay. Yeah. Which um, I idea. feel like that, I feel like if he would get unerratted at this point, he would could have the potential to be relevant. Uh, that mirror restand itself is just a whole game changer. It, yeah, it really is, right? Like it's yeah. just so it's very very hard to interact with. <laughs> so you want to hear the funniest part about that event? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So of course, <laughs> of course, I set a bad ring on fire as my I regular remember. ritual yeah. before the event. I set a bad ring on fire. I was in the I was in the car. I was driving to the airport and I was on the phone with Tony G. And he was like, "Dude, how are you getting there? Like all the flights are canceled from the East Coast because of the storm." And I was like, "Oh, my flight still says that it's good to go." So I got to the airport. I walked through security. I look at the flight when thing on the thing and it says like my flight's canceled. Oh. I'm like, okay. So I tried to get on a flight after that, tried to get on a flight after that. I managed to get the last seat on a 6 a.m. flight going to Chicago that morning, oh. which would have got me into Chicago at 8.15 and the event started at nine. Yeah. I got into Chicago, I drove there, ran up, handed my deck list in, went to sit down on my first game. I got absolutely waxed in my first game. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I guess I'm having a fun day. Like, this is it, right? Yeah. So I go to the next game, and when you get when you lose a round, you get down paired, right? Yeah. So I was playing some guy playing Zamasu or something yeah. like weird like that, right? And I got him in that game, and then the judge comes over to me, he's like, hey, bud, you got a 49 card deck, we gotta do a deck check on you. So he brings my deck over, guess which card I didn't have on my deck list? Mira. Bad <laughs> Mira. Mira. Mira, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had, to, I had to side in the, through the Dark Banisher from my sideboard, yeah. and like every game that Mira would have clearly gotten the yeah. game, I like tried to play Dark Banisher, and it was it like, didn't nah, work. <laughs> it's not, it was not getting there. But I man I managed to slide into top 16, and then in top 16, my first opponent just didn't show up. They had to leave, so oh, I went up to go. top eight. Top yeah. eight, I played on stream, and then top four, I played Robert Rizzi, and he just he was playing uh, the uh, red yellow surge coup yeah. leader. And he, it was just a better deck than the deck I was playing. And right, he's yeah. a really great player. Really, really it's good game yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Really, really good player. And I had a great time playing with him, but I learned a lot in that matchup. And I think that's one of the things is like, if you want to do well in an event like this, you got to prepare with one of the best decks if you want to, you know, do well. Know what your spread are, spread is, know what your worst matchup is, know what your best matchup is. Yeah. And I think one of the, like in talking about time, I think one of the really big things is like this new skill of knowing when to scoop. We were talking about that. It's very interesting because, like, you have 70 minutes, right? You have 60 minute round and then 10 minutes of overtime. If you're a super down game one, a lot of times, like, you're mentally conditioned to be like, well, keep grinding, keep grinding. I could clutch it out. Right. But then you sometimes you don't and you wasted 30 minutes and right. now you lose because your opponent's like, if you take 45 minutes to finish game one, your opponent's just, all right, I'm, you got five minutes to sideboard. They're gonna shuffle their cards for 10 seconds. It's just how they're gonna be, you right. know? They're gonna, sure. they're gonna not, they're not gonna slow play, but and they're gonna may, play slow. And it may be even a thing that's coming out of stress from their end. Yeah, you know, exactly. like trying to figure out, like, yeah, you can take a couple minutes aside. You have that's to it. think about it. Yeah. It's not like, you yeah. know, I've made a spreadsheet for everything. I know what I want to side in every yeah. matchup, but that doesn't mean that the person's deck is not gonna be exactly how I prepared yeah, for it. Yeah, exactly. Right? And yeah. I might need to think about, okay, what is actually gonna work better as a side option yeah. in this matchup, so. Yeah, yeah I totally agree with that. Like one thing that I've noticed, just like coming from other card games, Yu-Gi-Oh was very common when I was like when I was playing to know that you've lost, because yeah. the great games when I was playing heavily were very grindy in the mirror matches. So if you knew that you got blew out by like a specific card, it doesn't matter what card it is, you know that you should just go to game two. There's no reason to continue playing right. that game one and allowing your right. opponent to t like play their game out normally right. and waste ten minutes. Right. So go yeah. straight. To, like like for, it's not a very common place in this game, so it's not like you it's, can just lose to one card. The other thing about this game that I think makes that harder is you can play your way. I, I haven't played any other card games, but I have a lot of friends that have played yeah. other card games. And I've talked with them, and one of the things that I know from experience in this game is you can play your way out of a bad hand. Yeah, you can. You can open a crap hand, and by turn three, turn four, you can turn that hand around to a game-winning hand. And, you know, in some matchups, right, like, you may be in turn four, and you may see, like, okay, there's very little chance that I'm gonna win this, but if I see the two right cards in a row, yeah. I can win it, right? If I top deck hatch, like, that's a game right there. Yeah. But you have to see those things, and you need those cards. And is it worth taking that chance to go into time? or do you take the chance to see those cards? And I think that's a really hard decision that a lot of players are not used to making in this game because they've been easy. so used it, to. It's yeah. not, it's really not. So yeah. for, and just an example, say you're playing two mid-range decks and 
Uh, you're in game. You're in game one. Obviously, you just started, and you're you notice that you are falling behind. That it is not very easy to notice in this game that you're falling behind if you're not familiar with the matchup. So you're playing a Cell Surge, and you don't draw any of your like cards that are good against Cell Surge. You drew all your cards that are good against other matchups. Right. You're in a position to where now you have to discard your good cards that are not good for that matchup, but they're good in general. And then you're like stuck with a handful of nothing, and you think you can draw out of it. Right. But you can't. Like. It's not feasible because they have 12 cards in their hand and then you have five. Yeah. Card parity is in everything whenever you're playing like a mid-range strategy. Right, right. So, but if you're playing against aggro, you should know whether or not the game is over for your on your end by turn three. Right, so, right. Like you, you're if, you, if you charge at four energy, the game is over. Like, right. When you're playing against aggro, they have to kill you on turn three. If you get to turn four, they should scoop because the game's over. Like you're never right. killing uh, mono yellow, mono blue, blue yellow. If they charge your four energy, they're not losing. The game's over. Right. You have to kill them before, like really turn three is like the last turn you have. Yep. Yeah. The only ways you can get around that with aggro if you're really curious is just, your opponent has to be down on card parity. So it's like they have to be at five cards in the hand to your 12, like your right. 10. Card parity. Like your card difference. Like card say, disparity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have five, I have he's seven. He's not trying to diss card everyone. Card disparity. Like you he's just, he's yeah. trying to make a match, you yeah. know? Yeah. Get yeah. a parity. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I, it could be a funny thing. Okay. Parity. Card yeah. parity. Not parity. <laughs> like a parity disparity. of a card. Card disparity. Card disparity. Like, uh, like comment. Yeah, com yeah, yeah. <laughs> in this context, it works? I'm tripping. Yeah, it works. In, yeah. uh, in chemistry, you can have a lone pair. That's a pair of electrons. Oh, yeah, just yeah. hanging out, yeah. you know? That's yeah. me and Trey, a pair of electrons. Yeah. That's fair. <laughs> we just cause static off each other. We do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is facts. Um, what are you guys most excited for this weekend, Trey, if you want to go first? I'm just happy to be with, like, the, the people that, like, I talk to on a daily basis. Like, I talk yeah. to Giancarlo and all my teammates and all the people, like, from Facebook groups. It's really nice. Uh, and just being at events, again, like, we're feeling normal. Yeah. Like we're back to almost end of COVID type situation. Like it feels like that anyways, but it's probably not true, but it feels nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like my friends more than I like the cards. And like, I enjoy playing Dragon Ball, but at the same time, it's like, I like chilling with my friends. And when you play a card game, you make friends all across the country. You get to see twice a year. And because of COVID, I haven't seen people in like two to three years yeah. who I would consider close friends. I mean, we've made close friends in this game. You know yeah, I mean? totally. So like, I got people who are some of my closest friends who I haven't seen in two and a half years because of COVID, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So here we get to see, we get to hang out, like just bullshit, man. We don't even have to do anything. Yeah, definitely. Like, we weren't even playing yesterday. We were just hanging out with people, you know? I, yeah. so. I got excited earlier when I saw the Canadian boys, yeah, man. Like, we don't yeah. get to see them anymore. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just coming to an event and hanging out with people. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a huge part of it. And yeah. I think people get themselves really psyched out because they're like just thinking about the competition, yeah. right? It's like their heads on the competition. And like, for me, I, I've been, you know, I, I'm a dentist, yeah. which means that I had to go to dental school and yeah. getting into dental school is not easy. I had to study for years for exams. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about grinding, studying. I had, a, I had a glass table with a Sharpie whiteboard marker that I would draw on, I, you know, studying all this stuff. And honestly, I, prepping for this event, I felt like that again. Yeah. I felt like I was putting the time in, I was going late nights, you know, I was hanging out with me and Johnny Tao, we were spending late, late nights just grinding things out, yeah. figuring things out, figuring out sideboard options, figuring out different interactions, like evaluating the power of a card, you know, and like, obviously, thank you, Joyce, for being so supportive of me and my late nights of card game grinding. Uh, it's good to have a supportive partner yeah. in, your, in, your, sure, <laughs> in yeah. your explorations of yeah. these things, but like, it's so easy to get so focused on the competition and get your mind so ready, like, oh, I wanna win, I wanna do well, you know, like, I wanna win these matchups and all this stuff, but, like, the reality is, like, the three of us have never hung out, you know? And I feel like yeah. we're already great friends. Exactly, this is the first know? time we met. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, yeah. it, it, I feel like we're only gonna become Exactly, friends, we already you know? enjoyed lunch yeah. together. Like yeah. you say, you make connections, you meet new people. It's Totally. It's the cool thing about card games. Not, it, without a doubt, the best part about our card game is people you know yeah I mean? the car game is secondary like yeah in real in reality like I, i'm a competitive person i enjoy strategy i enjoy playing the game sure but that is always secondary to totally the, the human interaction you know yeah yeah i mean that's i i came from a game where i, I was really into this game called marvel contest of champions and yeah. it's a phone game yeah. and going from that where you know our interactions are mostly like through like line app or whatever you know where yeah. i have some chat where we're chatting with each other to a game where like in order to play it you gotta sit across from people, yeah. you know? And like, just intrinsically, like what we're doing is we're putting little rectangles of cardboard with pictures of spiky haired men yeah. on oversized mouse pads and yeah. like invoking 
emotional responses from each other. Yeah, very true. Like, that's yeah. awesome. And, and your mouse pad is like $300. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your spiky head cardboard is like $1,000. Like, it's crazy, man. <laughs> It's crazy yeah, it's, though, like just like you said, like we I've been playing card games for so long at forever, this point. Forever, yeah. So, um, Since I was like ten, eight years old, nine years old, like, ten years old. And just playing like on a casual level is completely different between going to like a big event. Yeah. So like I had my fun time playing. Like I'm playing casually now. It's yeah. got to the point where I have got to the point where I know how to play. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So you know yeah. I really don't stress on play testing as much as I used to. Yeah. When I was younger, I would I would grind like you said. I would yeah. literally play. Game after game after game, I'd have somebody right. fight. Like we go back, we sparring. Like you're, like, yeah. you're, like you're going into the gym. Totally, you're just sparring up. Yeah. Absolutely, same thing. But we're just right. doing something else. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So. we're just working our brain cells. Yeah, pretty exactly. much. Yeah. yeah, getting that brain meat Getting strong. Yeah. And it, sometimes it puts a lot of stress on you, like just being prepared. But like, yeah. well, yeah, like you said. I mean, I probably Trey doesn't really play that much anymore. But I probably played two, three hundred games over the course of the past month, just getting ready for this event. Like you said, like. Yeah. You feel like you're in there, like you're in the lab, like it, yeah. it is what it is. But no, I mean, dude, listening, listening. But to you it. have to, you have to sacrifice other time. Like there were nights where I didn't go to the gym. I right. played cards. There were nights where I didn't hang out with my wife. I played cards. Or yeah, yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't walk the dog tonight because I'm play testing. Like you make these little sacrifices almost to get yeah, ready man. for this event. Yeah, it, it can, it can be very stressful. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I resonate with that. Yeah, for sure. Hey, what's going on? So the good thing about this game is, though, it really hasn't changed fundamentally since set two and a half. Yeah. So okay. Uh, so if you've played since set two and a half, yeah, yeah, they, they you, make... after you've done your fine tuning of understanding card, like how to play the game, just in general, you're you're there at that point where you're ha you're like you should be comfortable enough to just play. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, totally. I uh, all right. Next question. What's the best card in the game? Power uh, Super Saiyan. Definitely not. <laughs> in my opinion, if in my humble opinion, is Senzu Bean. That's a good opinion. That is that is honestly, yeah, that's a good opinion, Senzu Bean. How many players at Nats do you think are going to be tossing Senzu Beans to sell? Fifty percent. <laughs> like fifty percent. Yeah. It's, you just in that matchup, you hey, just can't hey, really afford to keep it in buddy, your hand. Eat this bean yeah. and beat up my son. Yeah. <laughs> Psych! Psych! And now I'm gonna go die. <laughs> that new, that new altar is pretty nice. That new altar is nice. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I yeah. may or may not have one, <clears throat> <Okay>. <laughs> and I may or may not have asked if I could uh, use one this weekend. And I most definitely was told that I couldn't use it. This weekend. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you're tight with Bandai. You get product early. You keep an eye out. They take care of y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's cool, man. I and, and that's one of the things. Actually, I was I've been talking to Trey about, but John Collier also. If you want to get involved with this, you know, I'd sure. be, I I want to I want to bring content creators together. Yeah. I think like one of the things that this game is lacking is like is this the bridge of bridge, you know, like getting yeah. people on the same page to build something where we can all be collaboratively working towards shared goals. Instead of you know just trying to do our thing and build our whatever it is because like we each have strengths in what we do you yeah, know exactly. Trey you're a really really good player man and like the videos you do on your on, on your <laughs> all right coming from coming, I'll maybe, just play, I'll coming just play. from a scrub over here I'll just play it I'll just play it uh, no but I think you're a great player man and watching your videos you know like we've chatted about like how we can improve things yeah. in each other also and I think that is really valuable but having like the thing that I really want to do and I mean this may be like a pipe dream but like do you guys remember the Beckett magazines yeah. from like oh, middle yeah. school? Yeah. yeah. I want to make a DBS magazine okay. that is like, it has a, on each page, it's like content creators comment about something and it'll be like quarterly, yeah. right? So when a new set comes out, like each content creator is assigned one thing and that'll rotate set to set. So like, yeah. like uh, best card or like yeah. best looking card or like most collectible card or like most impactful SR yeah. or like best archetype, you know, like stuff like that where it's a publication where you can either get it digitally or if we could eventually make a physical thing. I have a friend that does, uh, his name's Spirit Bomb and he draws like awesome, awesome stuff and he yeah. makes those lenticulars that like they change when you look at them, yeah. you know? And do you remember the magazine, the Beckett's that had yeah. the lenticulars oh, yeah. on oh, them, yeah. dude? Yeah. Like I want to make lenticular magazines. Okay. I feel so like it would be such a cool... How, how old are you? How old am I? Yeah. I am 30. 
Do you remember zines? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a zine. That's what you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a zine, Conceptually, yeah. basically like a zine. Yeah, yeah but I want to make it like a like a legit magazine. I got you. Know, you. Like bound, yeah. like maybe even like. But I think the way to start would basically just being doing something digital yeah. because I think people would have to be able to get behind it. Of course, it. But, yeah, yeah. But I feel like that may potentially be a yeah. good you know foundation for yeah. people to connect it and work. It could on be like a website. Like, yeah, something. website even. Yeah, yeah. something landing trying page. Even trying to jump as digital now. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You could just have it on one of the deck building websites. Yeah. And instead of, uh, we could just make NFTs for the lenticulars, you know? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, we could get into that. Yeah, there might be some money there, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting, because you, you look at Yugi Tube, which is like Yu-Gi-Oh YouTube, some of them dudes have literally 100,000 subscribers. Yeah. And no offense to Dragon Ball, but we have like one tenth of that. No, I mean the and, the biggest. This is something I thought about when yeah. I started. Is like you know I'm friends with Tony, and, yeah. and I was looking at you know like what is the, who are the best YouTubers in Dragon Ball, yeah. right? In terms yeah. of best, I'm talking about subscriber count. Yeah, this yeah. Is super players, right? Super they have players 35, Joey, yeah. They have 35k. Yeah. And then our second best is Joey. Yeah. Joey's at eight point something. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like we're not fishing from a big pond. No. You know, regardless of what we're doing. So I think the goal really like is to expand the pond. Yeah. Right? You gotta make the pond bigger. And in order for that to happen, the people that are in the pond should be working together to build it outwards. Yeah. You know? And like people like like Nanogenics and Rhyme Style, like they have huge followings, right? And yeah. like they have the most pull for these videos and they've been doing good videos, but like they if if I like their videos, yeah. I enjoy them because like they're, you know, they're shit posty and they're like fun and, yeah. and I like watching their interaction, but like I just wish they knew how good some cards were. You know, when mm -hmm. they pulled that Kefla, like if they knew what that card actually did, yeah. you know, and were like, yo, this is strong. Like there's right. power in this piece of cardboard instead of just being like, I want to pull an SPR hit so I can send it into Beckett and get a 9.5. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. like. They don't really play and that, that, if they just took the time to learn how to play it, they would yeah, love totally. it. They yeah, totally. I'm it. sure they would. Yeah, they're both really good gamers. You know, they're both really good at, the, at a lot of games that they play, but you know, it may not just be their thing, but I think just, you know, Working together and expanding, I think that, and and in, and it works in right in tandem with the stuff we're talking about, about making friends and building community yeah. and like interacting with people. So, yeah, I'm psyched. I think this weekend's gonna be really fun. I'm yeah. ready to sit across from some people and give them shiny pieces of metal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's all right. I've already had a good weekend. Like we got here yesterday, we've been chilling. Yeah. It's been fun. Like I've never been to Cali. We're experiencing new things. It just like I said, it goes hand in hand. Why, why do we want to come to California to play a card game? You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Because you do other stuff too. I would probably have too. never been to LA if if, if it wasn't Dragon Ball. Yeah. Yeah. Dragon Ball. I got no reason to come out here except to play cards. You know. You heard it here first. Dragon Ball Super card game Nats 2021 20, almost 22. We've got us flies for wanton boys. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we are for the gods. <laughs> we kill them for the sport. Soon the science will not only fix the cells <laughs> to the state. That is one of the funniest videos I've so ever seen. So we are eternal. I'll see you guys on the next episode of Joku <laughs> DMD. Peace. Okay. Deuces. <laughs>